Hello, this is Ole Henrik Schelsta, and in this brief tutorial we're going to blend two images shot during night. We had some tad of northern lights a few days ago. So we have a bright exposure for the shadows, and we have a darker exposure for the highlights and the sky. Let's have a look at those two in Lightroom and how the raw files looked and which settings we have used. So this is the darker exposure, ISO 3230 seconds, f2.28. I should perhaps have shot it at 25 seconds because I have some stretching of the stars in the corners. Anyway. This is how the image looked, or exposure looked, straight out of camera. And after some tweaking, it is ready to be imported into Photoshop. And uh, this is the brighter exposure. Things are lagging a bit, sorry. And, uh, this is how this exposure looked straight out of camera. And it's 90 seconds and ISO 3200. All right, um, both are shot with the Pentax K1 with the Pentax 1530 lens. And as we can see, this uh, brighter exposure is very clean. There's no magenta color casts in the shadows, which often happens if the exposure is very underexposed and we really push the shadows. So it's very clean clean exposure. Okay, let's go back to Photoshop. I prefer to use luminosity masks when I'm blending night images. And I would like to have a mask that picks up the darkest pixels in this image. Uh, lumin luminosity masks are not static. They change according to the luminosity values at any point when we are editing. So, if I turn on this layer, a lumin the luminosity mask for the dark pixels will look quite different. As if when this is turned off, if you understand what I mean. So, I turn off this brightest exposure because I want a mask that picks up the very darkest pixels so that I can replace them with a brighter exposure. I have it on the Kuiper's newest panel, the V5, where he has something called Rapid Mask. And you can of course achieve this using the older versions of his masks as well. So I will try to pick a dark's 5, see what happens, turn on the layer, and uh, I don't think that's a very good blend, things look very washed out. So let's try again with a dark's 4, oh uh, sorry forgot to turn off this layer. I will do it again. Darks 4. Yeah, that's a better blend. And let's see how the edges are. Some fringing, we can fix that afterwards. But let's have a closer look at the mask. So I pick the mask, Press on the Alt key and click on it. 
and we see there's some white shining through that means that some of the brightest exposure will bleed into the sky and I can paint directly on my mask black as my foreground color pick the brush and just paint black there we are and I can also yeah it's already on in overlay when we have the brush in overlay mode if I paint with the black for instance only what is 50% black or darker will be affected so pure white will in less degree be affected I will bring down the opacity a bit so I can actually work with my mask using overlay and black and white so if I choose white I can make this part clearer so more of the bright shines through here like that I can make more black in here so the water is perhaps darker white again and make things shine more through here trees perhaps and perhaps I'm going to keep the water pretty dark so, I can. so you get the, my drift anyway overlay change between white and black paint directly on the mask and fine tune it to your taste so alt and click to bring back the image so I think we have a pretty decent blend some uh, ghosting here so I go to my mask and paint with black well that doesn't look very good I will clone that one later uh, let's have a look at the edges uh, pretty okay some fringing brighter parts here is it possible to fix that yes it is I can use rapid mask again but first I will pick a curves and give it a light swan I have tested this in advance and I will bring down sorry I have to make it a clipping mask so that it only affects this layer so I click here bring down the dark from black point the mid tones let's have a look before and after yeah that helps and uh, it's then, instead of pushing things even more I can just make a duplicate of that layer so before and after and you can even make another copy if you think that's necessary so this looks better along the edges okay control zero so this is how I go about blending these night images using uh, luminosity masks I would assume that it's possible to also use blend if let's have a look I haven't tried that out let's see what happens so I will just delete sorry delete those and I will delete lay mask and I will double click on this layer to bring up the Blendif dialog box since the brightest exposure is on top I will work mainly on this side so 
pressing down the old key and bringing over that one. And we can see how we are bringing more and more of the dark exposure into the brighter. Same happens here. Let's for and after. Yeah, this also gives a decent blend, so it's quite possible to use the, the blend diffs also to, to blend exposure like this. Let's click OK and have a look at the edges, how are things looking. Perhaps even worse now. So it's possible to double click here again and go back and fine tune things. No, that didn't help much. Yeah, so we can just work the sliders until we are happy. Okay. So, in other words, we can use blend if uh, as well to, to blend these exposures. And uh, I can, of course, also add a layer mask, white, brush tool, black as my foreground color low opacity and just well brilliant so the blend is are preventing me from hey, no sorry of course i had this on an overlay back to normal and we can paint and, and fine-tune further things Okay, let's have a look at uh, how the image looked when I was finished. Back to Lightroom. There we have it, the finished image, after I have added some layers and worked the image in Photoshop. Okay, that was all. Thank you for watching this tutorial.